is up friends how's it going today we are going to talk about is the bmw r1250 rs the right bike for you um, first off let me say i just love this bike and i'm loving this ride i'm on right now <laughs> i love this road uh, so let's get into it though well, i'll go over some of the you know points about this bike that you may or may not find uh, that fit you so see you in a bit one of the things that's awesome about this bike is its flickability. This thing flicks real easy because of its low center of gravity. Um, on roads like this, you can just lean it over and it just goes. It's um, very willing to lean to the left or right with a little bit of input from you. So that's one thing I really like about this bike is how effortless it is to kind of get into turns and lean it over and kind of like wheel it around just with my hips. It's uh, really cool. One of the things I don't like about this bike, and not that it's a problem right now because we're going really slow through a neighborhood, but is the wind protection on this bike um, is not that good. And if you move the uh, stock windscreen up or down, it just creates more head buffeting. So I'm five foot eight, and you know if you're kind of in that range, five seven, eight, nine, ten, probably uh, most people complain about the wind buffeting. And so that's why I had to get this little wind spoiler on top um, to mitigate that extra wind noise, not only to make my ride more comfortable for my head, but also when I do moto vlogging like this. So that's kind of a downside of this bike. <clears throat> and a lot of people that get this bike that go touring or go for longer distances, they typically buy the tall, much taller touring screen that will cut out all that wind. I mean, first and foremost, uh, when we're talking about is a bike right for you, the first question, of course, and it's a subjective one, is, you know, do you like the bike? Just standing or looking at it, does it, does it kind of ignite your fire? Does it tickle you in that right spot? When you look at it, do you see and go, oh, man, that's a good looking bike? Or when you sit on it, it's like, oh, this is nice. You know, so it's got to give you that kind of happy feeling first off. <clears throat> And for me, again, this is subjective, but for me, when the first, very first time I saw this bike, I wasn't quite sure because of the boxer engine, and I never had a boxer engine before, and it stuck out real far in the sides, I was like, eh, that's kind of weird, and, but the more I looked at it, and the more I read about it, I just started to kind of fall in love with it, and now that I have it, I just, I love it, and it is a sport touring bike. It's in the sport category on BMW's website. It's trying to do two things at once. It's trying to be a sport bike and it's also trying to be a touring bike. So any bike that's going to try and, you know, be more than one thing is always going to have some drawbacks. So, I mean, if you're into sport bikes, then the downside for this one is that you're not going to have 180 horsepower or something like that. It's, it's, uh, it's not, you know, if you're wanting to go 150 miles an hour or you know, have a bike that you can take to the track and, you know, crank out some serious power. This has a, a decent amount of horsepower. It's got 136 horsepower, which for me is plenty. Where it really shines is the torque. It's got 105 foot-pounds of torque. Um, this is a 534-pound bike. So that torque is very fun and allows you to pull away from situations or just kind of get up to speed really fast and kind of push you back in the seat. But what happens is after that low end torque, you know, once you hit 60, 70 miles an hour, um, it starts to level off because the horsepower is not there to wind out the bike and get it, you know, up to that 150 miles an hour or whatever it is <coughs> that you're looking to do. The top speed on this bike is, they say 125 plus, I think on BMW's website or something like that. But I, I saw a guy, on uh, the Autobahn in Germany, uh, I saw more than one guy do this, and they got the they got the bike up to 143 miles an hour. In terms of the Boxer engine itself, it is an amazing feat of engineering, and for these two reasons: one, I mentioned earlier that it's a low center of gravity, so it it makes the bike feel very much lighter than it is, and and you can flick it around. 
and lean it over with a you know slight push in the handlebars it leans really easy but on the engineering side one of the more important things is that both of the cylinder heads stick out on the left and right side which puts them in the wind and keeps them equally cool so they don't get really that smoking hot and which is uh, you know a, a huge benefit for engine performance now if you know anything about v-twins classic cruiser v-twins uh, a lot of them will have rear cylinder shut off because that rear cylinder on that v um, is not in the wind and it's tucked behind the cylinder in front of it and typically kind of under the seat to some degree and it gets very hot <clears throat> and not only does that affect engine performance but it's also uncomfortable for the rider where they get a lot of heat when they get to a stoplight or a stop sign a lot of that heat will rise up into your legs and chest and face the riding position on the rs um, is is good again it's it's going to depend on each person um, i kind of have a back issue from years ago so it's not all the way leaned over but it does have these kind of pseudo clip on bars so you are definitely leaned forward on this bike and in a kind of sporty position the um the foot pegs are back a little bit they're not as far back as a a full-on sport bike um, so your, your knees are not at a 90 degree angle, they're bent back a little bit. So if you're a taller person, uh, just like any other sport bike, if you're tall and you've got long legs, you're definitely going to probably feel cramped up on this. Um, but they do have a taller seat you can buy for it, which raises it up an inch and a half or so. Uh, but if you're you know a tall rider, that's probably not going to make much difference, an inch. Uh, so I'd say this bike is really good for people that are probably, you know, five foot six to five ten, or maybe even six feet. It depends how long your legs are. I mean, some people have very, very long legs. And so for me, I'm I'm a little bit shorter rider. I'm five foot eight. Uh, I think I have like a thirty inch inseam, maybe thirty one. I'm not quite sure, but I think it's thirty. And this new Sergeant seat's very comfortable, but it did lower me down quite a bit. Uh, which is awesome in one way that, you know, I, I can flat foot this no problem with my riding boots on now. Which is cool. But it also squishes your legs up a little bit. The lower the seat goes, the higher, you know, the more angle you're going to have on your hip. So on longer rides, I, I, my leg kind of tends to get uh, a little tired of being so cramped up after a while and my back I can handle this for two and a half three hours and then my back starts screaming now again that's my particular issue and uh, if you don't have back problems you might not uh, experience that uh, but I do know that most people that buy this bike and think they're gonna tour on it if they try to tour on it as a stock bike they typically will quickly realize that it's not that comfortable as a tour bike for long long hauls without changing some things so most people will get the bar risers which will pick the bar the handlebars up uh, they'll, they'll elevate the handlebars up a little bit and back a little bit so it puts you in a more upright position so it's more like this so this is you know more like if i was riding a bmw rt or the you know police motorcycle you'd be more like this sitting straight up whereas on this bike i'm, I'm you can see i'm noticeably noticeably lean forward a little bit more so they get bar risers to straighten up their posture and then they'll get the uh, touring screen which i mentioned earlier which cuts all the wind and add some you know panniers sometimes they come with them for extra you know from the factory they'll put the panniers on there for you but you got to pay for them they're not free uh, the engine itself is a boxer again and that's not everyone's cup of tea not just the looks of it but also its characteristics so it is a it is an engine that does vibrate 
um, especially when you, when you start it, it does shoot to the left, kind of shakes the bike a little bit. And then when you're just riding a bike, it, it kind of has a, a certain sound and um, it, it's, uh, it's not super awe-inspiring. So it doesn't sound like an inline four race bike or a sport bike. Um, people say it sounds like a sewing machine. Um, it, it does, uh, you know, that's kind of one down point there is it just the sound of it, especially stock. So I got this uh, Akrapovich uh, pipe which uh, definitely helps it sound better but it doesn't really change the note of the bike that much it sounds a little deeper with the pipe but you really have to get rid of the, the catalytic converter if you want it to sound meaner or louder you got to get new headers and have uh, the baffles taken out of the pipe out of the uh, exhaust can then you can get a louder bike but it still doesn't sound like a sport bike and it doesn't sound like a Harley Davidson. So it's like, it's kind of got its own sound. It sounds um, kind of like an angry motocross bike. A loud, angry motocross bike is kind of what it sounds like once you take the baffles out and get, you know, kind of straight pipes, if you will. It's my friend Chico. What's up? Hey. His white RS, he's got bunch of things he's done to it let's see off the top I can see pen guards bar riser so what does that do about it? is it bring it up like an one inch, inch one inch and back a little bit uh, and back a little bit yeah the crash bars crash bar with this highway pegs <laughs> oh nice uh, yeah. <laughs> does that help it helps when you're like when you're getting tired of the same position you can just put the the fit forward and so it just pops out? Yeah, and I, I use, it's a little rough. Oh. So that the vibration doesn't put it down. That's good. That's cool. I put the <coughs> one inch shorter um, foot pegs. I also changed the- you got a touring screen. Touring screen. So this tall. one is really good, really good. Yeah, that's uh, even taller than mine with my little spoiler. You know what I mean? There's something like that in my car. A little spoiler. Yeah, it's taller. What it's else? Some visual, visual, <laughs> visual. Yeah, I remember that. Go, GoPro. GoPro, exactly. Transform. Just Decepticons. Decepticons. Yeah. Oh, this no. is the Megatron. <laughs> I put also the 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 protection here. This is a cover for. Oh the, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got double coverage on your cylinder heads there. What else? And it came with the bags. Came with the bags. Oh, you got t tank. Uh, the, got the Garmin. Yeah, this is actually an interesting change because I actually broke. I had an iPhone 15, brand new, and on the trip it flew by because the the cradle didn't hold the phone. The BMW cradle didn't hold the phone properly, and I got into a, like we got into a big pothole. It just jumped my cell phone. Oh, the the, the 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 uh, holder that has the little spring on yeah. it. Yeah, that I one. had I had one of those. I took it off. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend because it's. You know, it's not safe for the phone. Either get, you know, the, the quad lock or just get a, the, the navigator. Because the navigator is, like, there's no way. Yeah, there's no way it's, it's locked in there. Well, that's cool. So, but we're... Put a small, uh, this is to hold the helmet. Oh, helmet lock. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. really good. See, I just, I put mine, at, well, you don't have one. I put the top case. I lock it onto the top case. Um, but we were just talking inside. And you're you're you you're getting rid of it. You get what? You get you're getting rid of the bike. Yes, yes. So you're going with the K sixteen hundred. Yes. So what? Well, let's because I'm in the middle of making a video about is the RS the right bike for you. So what's what what is the major decision for doing that? So the major decision was my the riding position for me for my body specifically is I noticed even with all the upgrades I did my knees were still very bent and. I started after 1,000 miles, I started getting a lot of pain on my knees. And that's me, that's not the bike. It hurts to trade the bike because this bike is absolutely beautiful. I love the, the visuals of this bike. Uh, the engine is perfect and it, it doesn't vibrate near as, as much as, as one would expect from a more sporty bike. Even with the risers, like you don't, I don't feel the, the vibration. My point was the knee. So. I found out for myself that if I put the foot forward, 
or slightly more angled, 90 degrees, yeah. it would be better for my for my for my body. And that's the only reason I'm changing that. Yeah, because we are a little bit tucked up. Yeah, the position here is pretty much. This position, right? Yeah, so it's not 90 degree. Yeah, this is the issue. After all, I, with the with the knee protection, I started feeling a lot of pain after 1,000, you know, 1,200 miles. So that was the major reason. Yeah. Other than that, and and the intent of this bike is to travel. My intent is to do long, long, long travel. So. Yeah, that's why I've said many times on my channel is that most of my friends that have this bike i have a few friends you're the only one in the area that has one i know of <clears throat> um oh actually no i have another friend jay that bought one um but people that use it for a traveling bike they put risers and a touring screen and then then you're good to go and, and it's an amazing bike like throughout the whole trip we did it didn't i didn't feel like my back was absolutely comfortable my my knee my shoulders my wrists were absolutely comfortable the only issue was the knees, and that's why I'm changing for the K600. And of course, right, the engine is larger, and then yeah, you know, that's that's a inline six, so it's gonna be interesting to yeah, test the. It's, the like I said, it's like a Ferrari on two wheels. Yeah, <laughs> that's a nice bike. Well, that'd be good, but you, you probably won't see it for a while. It's gonna take a while it's to get it, probably. Yeah. I still have a lot to enjoy on this one. Right now, it has what five thousand miles, so it's you know. It's actually in a good mileage right now, even to do a trade. So. Yeah, definitely. Well, it looks great. White looks nice on this. Oh, absolutely love it. All right. Well, thanks for showing us that. I'm gonna I'm gonna sit on it. Oh yeah, it's it's taller than mine now because of the. My seat is lower and the risers I can feel. I'm, I'm like, I'm more like where, the, where these are. <laughs> and the lower foot pegs, you might notice the difference too. Yeah, yeah a little bit. I think it's, but mine is just because the seat, because my seat goes, is lower by about an inch and a half. I want to get one of these too, the USB port. Yeah, the USBs. I definitely use that a lot. Well, we'll have to do another video when you get your, your K1600. Oh, <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. When I got it, expect a video. <laughs> All right, everyone's getting dressed up. Get out of here. All these cool dudes. I'm just here down the street. Just wrap up this video. Um, as we just saw from my friend Chico, he's actually trading his RS in to get a K1600. And his points for the reasons were very valid. He and I both love this RS platform. Um, problem is with him, it's like, as he said, it's him, it's his body. <laughs> and with me, same thing um, for the back. I've, I, I hurt my disc uh, back about five years ago. and. Anytime I put too much pressure on it, it does kind of start to ache a lot. And on longer rides, this bike does get to me. <clears throat> so, you know, in the end, is this RS for you? Um, definitely could be. It's an awesome, amazing bike. The boxer engine, shaft drive over here. Ooh. Shaft drive. Um, it, it, just the technology, this TFT screen. It's just amazing, and I've, I've said this many times on my channel, like, um, you know, uh, Chico did this to his bike too, bar risers and touring screen to make it, you know, a little bit more comfortable on longer rides. Definitely helps, and he also lowered his pegs. Definitely helps, but I always said, well, if you're going to do that, why don't you just get an RT? And, well, a couple things with that. One is the RT is much more expensive than this bike so even by spending a little bit of money to get the tour screen and the risers and lowering the pegs which is very not much money at all um you're you're left with a bike that's quite comfortable it's got the same engine as drt and you didn't spend the thousands and thousands of extra dollars to get it also chico and some people just do not like the look of the rt the front end is so big and bulbous a lot of people really don't like that um 
but you know it is it is the RT is definitely more comfortable once you're on the road riding. Uh, your your riding position is is, is more mid with the RT, meaning your legs are more at a 90 degree angle. Whereas this this on this bike, your legs are tucked back uh, quite a bit. So and that's where you know Chico's getting his knee pain, <laughs> and I've had that happen a couple times where I've got a like a cramp in my calf right next to my, you know at the top part right by my knee. And it's, it just won't go away until I pull over and get off the bike. But that's only happened a couple times. So, I, you know, it's is it the right tool for the right job, that type of thing? And this bike is, you know, in that straddling, that sport touring thing, trying to do two jobs. And, you know, for some it definitely fits. For me, this is a, a two-hour to three-hour bike, you know, radius around my, you know, where I live. And that's great, and I like it sporty. Um, if if I didn't do moto vlogging, I wouldn't even have that wind spoiler on there. I just put that on there to cut the wind so the audio is clearer. Um, I have the handlebars in the stock position. Got the pod in the back, and you know, I like it sporty looking, and it's great for me. But if I was going to go on long rides, I I would definitely either trade this in and get an RT. Or maybe even an XR, which is very comfortable. It's a better seating position. Or I would, you know, opt to, you know, do the bar riser and the touring screen. Um, and the RT has bags too. This doesn't have bags, so but you know, bags for this is uh, panniers is about sixteen hundred bucks if you get the BMW ones. But that's it. It's a very fun bike. I really, really enjoy it. And if I had the extra coin, I would definitely just get another bike that was more of a touring bike and keep this one for my, you know, closer to home, fun rides. All right, well, that's it from this side. You know, um, have any questions or comments or any suggestions, please let me know. Comment in the section below. I'm happy to answer questions about the, about the RS. I love this thing, but... You know, it's not for everybody, and if you're just going to be touring a lot, I would probably, you know, if you have the extra coin, I would just spend it on a different type of bike because you do have to do a few things to this bike to make it more of a touring bike. Uh, panniers, touring screen, bar risers at minimum, and potentially uh, lowering the pegs uh, if you're a taller person. That's it. Thanks again for joining me, and we'll see you next time later.